First of all, I want to introduce Ed Milet to everybody. Ed's going to be our keynote speaker at Ultimate Partnering this year. Um, Ed is a successful author, two books, uh, both of which I have and read thoroughly and dog-eared and have yellow, you know, yellow highlights all throughout him. Um, he's a successful business. This man, very successful, successful father, and has the fastest growing podcast in the world right mm. now. So, Ed, uh, I think I became addicted to you about two years ago when um, I saw you being interviewed by somebody else. And I thought, wow, that's good stuff. Thank and then you. I looked you up and I saw your podcast and I started listening to your podcast. And then uh, YouTube got the algorithm and then they started sending me, you know, your different uh, uh, things. Yeah. You know? yeah. And um, I actually saw you at um, uh, Traffic and Conversion. Mm hmm. So I saw you with a keynote and I had, I had watched so much of your content, listened to so much to your story so many times. I thought, you know, I probably know what he's going to say. I'll go into, I'll go into the, for the first five or 10 minutes. And if it is that, then, you know, go see one of the other shows. Um, and I went in there and before I knew it, it was an hour later, mm -hmm. you know, I was on the Ed Milet emotional roller coaster. I <laughs> laughed. I literally cried and I was inspired. And I thought, wow, that was, that was one of the best presentations I've ever seen. Thank you. Well, wow. I'm sorry you're addicted to me, but beyond that, <laughs> yeah, it's a great. Terrible, I podcasts all the time. Yeah. Terrible thing to be addicted to, but hey, it's all good stuff. It's all growth. I'm gonna actually have you share that with my kids. That would help. My, my <laughs> they're both in college, and uh, that would be good for them to hear what they should be doing with me. They should be addicted to me. Well, I watched that uh, growing up as my lad. Yeah. Uh, Oh, oh yeah, that was a really good one. I was really proud of that one. I couldn't get my wife to come on the show still, but my kids, uh, they, I enjoyed that that interview very, very much. My favorite one. Mm. So the you know uh, out of your book, Max Out Your Life, I actually ripped out three pages that I keep. I got a little desk in my room before I go to bed. I do some, um, I do yes, and I do some, um, you know, I do some reflecting. And one of the quotes you have in that book on page ninety eight is, uh, "I'm chasing down the ultimate version of me." The day, yeah. the day will come when I get face to face with the destiny version of me. I want the satisfaction of knowing that I spent a lifetime, lifetime chasing down this man, that in the end, I caught up with him, um, that he and I are identical, that I challenged myself, I took risks, I dug deeper, I put in the work and I gave it my all. And I used every ounce of the blessings of God, that God gave me and I left nothing in the tank. It's my driving force of my life. Yeah. I thought that was an awesome quote. That's like the man in the ring quote by Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. So I like it. Well, I mean it. Let me show you something. This is uh, right next to where I work every day. This is my dad. It's wow. a good picture of my dad when he was sober. And this is my dad's uh, one year announcement of his passing, his obituary. Hmm. And I actually keep this right here where I do most of my work every day. And it's a description of my dad's life. Um, and it says that, you know, no one spread more love in a lifetime than my dad. And I keep that nearby because I actually think I was just talking about this I think I don't remember who it was on my show recently it might have been Matthew McConaughey I'm not sure who it was I think it was Matt but I think about death a lot and um not in a cryptic way but it gives me a reminder of how blessed I am to be alive and I'm under no illusion that it's going to you know be forever now my soul's forever but you know Ed Milet the body you know one thing occurred to me I can't believe I'm saying this today, but it's a it's an interesting day in my family life. I had kind of a family issue come up about 10 minutes before I came on here. That's pretty significant. And I was with my dad when he passed away, like physically with him. And um, when he passed, my mom and my sisters didn't want to stay in the room with him just because it was so sad. So I was with my dad for like an hour and a half before the hearse came. And uh, I know this doesn't sound very motivational, but I think it will be if you remember what I said. And something dawned on me immediately when I was there, and that was that my dad wasn't there anymore. Meaning, whoever my dad was, was gone. And if you look around that room, my dad's body was still in there, but he wasn't. I had this deep sense my father was gone, even though I was with his body. My dad's achievements were up on the mantle in the very room we were in. That wasn't my dad. My dad still had problems when he passed away. Those weren't my dad. My dad was a soul and a spirit. And that's who my dad was. He was an energy. He was a force, just like all of you are. We're not our accumulations. We're not our possessions. Even though I've accumulated and I possess a lot of stuff, I'm none of those things. I'm not my body. I'm something beyond that. And I want to catch that ultimate version of me. And it's actually something that isn't a speech. It's not just something in my book. It's 
pretty much how I live most of the time. I'm addicted to the expansion of my being. I, I want to know how far I can expand, how much more I can love, how much more I can think, how much more I can feel, how much more I can give the memories that I could have in my life. And so to me, there's this ultimate version God made me to be that I haven't met yet, but I'm excited to meet him and I'm pursuing him. And I'm pursuing him quickly because I'm running out of time. And so um, I think that's why maybe when I speak that people, whether you think I'm the best speaker in the world or the ninth best or whatever, doesn't matter to me, but you certainly will feel something when I speak because I feel it when I'm saying it. You can't transfer to somebody that which you're not actually experiencing, not deeply. And so I actually deeply experience this stuff. Like I have a great time. If you knew me, man, like I'll show you right here after I got about four hours of work today is where I will spend most of my time, which is in those cigars that are in that humidor. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I have a great time. I mean, I have a blast. The same time when you're around me, there's an edge to me. And if you're in my proximity and you're a friend of mine, I'm going to, you're going to want to be you most stuff in life is caught not taught you're going to catch it if you're around someone like me like i live life intentionally i love life i'm blessed to be here i've had two heart attacks i'm only 52 so i know how lucky i am to be here in fact right before i got here i'm dealing with a very significant family thing that came up and it's just another reminder of how precious life is so long answer i apologize but it's not just to quote my book it's how i try to try how i try to live hmm, absolutely so, um, you know, one of the things I've been teaching people how to invest in commercial real estate for I know. 22 years. Yep. Um, so one of the, the, the big difference between those that are very successful or even successful getting into the first deal is mm -hmm. mindset. It's getting over themselves. Um, mm -hmm. In you, the first uh, chapter in your Max Out for Life book, you talk about uh, things happen for me, not to me. Can you get into that a little bit? Yeah, you know, the other thing too, in buying real estate, because I've done a lot of commercial real estate too, is one of the part of getting over yourself is actually believing you have to know everything before you execute a deal. Um, the reason someone like you is so valuable, and the reason I agreed to speak to your group after we vetted you, because I get about 3,000 speaking requests a year, and I only do about 100. And so we vet them pretty carefully. I've had somebody take advantage of me in commercial real estate in, in the last year. And so um, you don't have to know everything to do every deal. And for example, the third deal I did in my life was a strip mall. I bought a strip mall on a seller carry. And I made a mistake where I didn't, I did not clear one of the liens through the escrow. I made a mistake and it cost me a lot of money at the time. Um, that happened for me, not to me, because I'm the most diligent dude in the world now when I do escrow. And I've saved myself probably $50 million on things I've caught over the 300 commercial deals I've done, for example, in escrows. So like everything that happens really ends up happening for you, not to you, if you believe that. And so even my dad dying, we go back to that. Like it happened for me, not to me. It's horrible that I lost my dad, but I live more intentionally because I did. I'm a better dad because I did. I'm closer to my mom because it happened. I'm closer to my sisters. I, I'm less focused on accumulating stuff and more about accumulating memories. So Anything in your life can happen for you, not to you. And especially if you're going to be in the real estate business, you have to believe that because there's cycles, there's markets. And so sometimes the getting is going to be really great. And sometimes it's not. And writing out a deal that's not going well for a while, you better believe this is happening for me and not to me. Because if you think it's happening to you, you can make all kind of panic type decisions, sell when you shouldn't, refinance when you shouldn't. There's all kinds of stuff that you can make mistakes if you don't know things are happening for you. So I think that's a really profound quote. I'm not the only one who says it. I don't know if I was first or third who said it, but I, I live by it. One of the stories you tell is about the thermostat, which the first time I heard it, I was like, wow, that's that's profound. Yeah. That's so real. Could you just give the brief version of that here? And then we'll let yeah, you the most powerful force, by the way, are you from Massachusetts? I am. Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. You know that I am too. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. yeah once, once New England or always a New Englander, right? Yeah, I'm from Weymouth, by the way. So from Abington. You are? Okay. Yeah. Then neither one of us grew up with any money. That's great. So <laughs> I uh, <laughs> and I uh I have an island I bought. You probably know because you follow my stuff, but I was in New England yesterday. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I bought an island called Hope Island. Talk about real estate. Uh -huh. All I've all my life I wanted to own an island. I've bought it. I've done. I want everyone there to have hope. Commercial real estate is the fastest way 
in my opinion, if you do it correctly to get wealthy, that exists in the world for an average ordinary person. So let me just state that really clearly. And so I've done enough. I've done residential, commercial. I've built and sold companies. I've done all kinds of stuff. I've invested even in the stock market and made money. But I've also lost money in a lot of things. Commercial real estate is the best and fastest way in my mind to make money, real wealth, generational wealth that exists in the world. And so that's that's awesome. Um, in terms of your thermostat, this is a really important thing. The most powerful force on the planet is for you to be consistent with your identity or the way you see you or what you believe you deserve in your worth. And I've watched this over and over, brother, where your thermostat setting is your identity. So if you're a 75 degree or let's just say, and you have multiple settings, happiness, fitness, wealth, love, you have multiple ones, but let's just say you're a 75 degree or financially, right? And you start heating your life up. You do two or three deals. You're at 90, 95, hundred. You're starting to really, you're at hundred degrees of financial results. If internally you don't raise the belief that you're worthy of that, you will unconsciously turn the air conditioners on of your financial life and cool it back down to what you believe you're worth. You'll sabotage it. And it'll seem coincidental. You're like, ah, a pipe broke. Ah, I made a bad deal. Oh, someone moved out. The tenant didn't do this. Or the market changed. It'll all seem coincidental, except it never is. It's this invisible air conditioner you turn on in your life. Yeah, you can have it in love. You all have that friend, let's say if you're a lady in there, who, man, you meet her and she's met the perfect dude and she's in love and it's 150 degrees of bliss and you haven't seen her in six months. You come back and she's like, ah, we broke up. He cheated. He wasn't right. He's not who I thought he was. No, you turned the air conditioner on again and you keep picking the same guy in a different body so that you can cool it back down. And so in your life, you've got to increase the thermostat setting because you can have all the talent, all the skills, all the tools, all the deals you want, but you will cool it back down. You've all done. As I say this, you're thinking of a situation in your life where you've done it or someone that you know. And even for me, when I started to get, you know, I was worth a million, I was worth 10 million, I was worth a hundred million. I got to a particular number and I'm like, ah, and I started to cool it back down again. And I had to read my own stuff. I'm like, wait a minute here. I need to alter my thermostat setting because the reverse is also true. When your thermostat setting's high at like a hundred and you're doing 70, you will turn the heater on and get it back up, which is a great thing too. I believe it's the single most invisible force in the world that dictates success. I teach this to my UFC fighters, my professional golfers, my NFL quarterbacks, the politicians I work with, the CEOs, the commercial real estate investors, my kids. Number one force in the world is your identity. You may say, well, what about faith, Ed? Because you talk about faith all the time. Part of my thermostat setting is because of my faith. I believe God made me him his, his image and likeness wants me to prosper, wants me to increase. So part of the fact that my identity is so high is that I believe I have a loving God who wants me to do something great with my life. So my faith is part of my identity. So it is an, I can talk about that when I come out there, man. It's the number one mover. You ask yourself, how's a kid from Weymouth, Massachusetts with average intelligence, right? No connections, not nothing really that impressive about him. How does he become worth hundreds of millions of dollars and reach millions of people every week? How the heck does that happen? It's the invisible force. I got a high thermostat setting that I've worked on all my life. And as I got to certain points, I knew the next move had to be a higher thermostat setting every time. So that's why I do read books. That's why you join groups like this. That's why you listen to my podcast. All those things are drips in increasing the temperature of your life. So that's how that works. I, I'm already getting fired up. Look at the veins are popping. I'm, all <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even, it's not even September. I'm not even at your deal yet. And I'm fired up. Yeah, that was so profound. The first time I heard it, it was, like, it was so brilliant. So Thank then, you. you know, it, it is, it's a matter of, uh, it's a matter of choice. And it's a matter of just feeding yourself good stuff on a regular basis. It's going to allow you to live at a higher thermostat level. Yeah, bro, it, it's really true. And I, and all of you have always heard, Hey, you're the, who you hang around. In my book, I actually teach you the actual tactics to change your thermostat setting, and it's not just who you hang around, although that is a part of it. And if you get this and you do it correctly, it'll alter your life. All of a sudden, let me tell you what starts to happen. Your reticular activating system in your brain starts to see deals that were there, but you missed all before. See investors that were there that you just never contacted. Miraculous things start happening. You're like, how in the world did I find this building when no one else wanted it? How did I find the investor? How do I put the deal together? 
because your thermostat setting so high, it delivers these things to you. And that's not manifest hokey stuff. It's really true. And I think I can teach you how to do it. And obviously, you're an example of that. I mean, look at the success you've had. So anyway. Great. So we're looking forward to having you at Ultimate Partnering. Um, Me too. It's going to be a great event. And uh, in September, that's where we'll be. So if you're not right now, uh, register for Ultimate Partnering and register and uh, we'll all see you there. This event is the combination of something really cool, the way you're doing it, because my team's told me about it. It's a lot of heavy tactics and strategies with the inspirational aspect. So it's not just all tactics with no energy, and it's not just energy with no tactics. It's both. That makes a great event. So I hope everybody comes. I'm excited to be there. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. See you there.